We've covered many strange and unexplained things which can be found within Egypt. Home to undoubtedly one of the most perplexing structures on the face of the planet, it is a place which also displays erosion from an as yet untold history. Evidence of a far greater antiquity and obviously its many unexplainable creations. Yet there are still many amazing areas of this once flourishing civilization's home which are yet to be told. One such site which is currently being unraveled is the once lost, submerged city of Heracleion. Also known as Thonis, it was a place long thought to have been mythical. A city of extraordinary wealth, mentioned by Herodotus, visited by Helen of Troy and Paris, her lover, but according to legend mysteriously buried under the sea. Recent discoveries have in fact confirmed that Heracleion was true, not only that it existed, actually know where it is. Successfully uncovering many of its treasures, archaeologists have been able to produce a picture of what life was like in this city in the era of its existence. Although it was long attested as mythical, upon its amazing discovery, the same academia immediately put forward a dating for its apparent submersion, stating beyond doubt that the city disappeared beneath the Mediterranean waves around 1200 years ago. So far, they have discovered the remains of more than 64 ships, lots of gold coins, giant 16-foot statues uncovered and brought to the surface, with hundreds of smaller statues of minor gods being found on the sea floor. Slabs of stone inscribed in ancient Egyptian have also been brought to the surface. Dozens of small limestone sarcophagi were also recently uncovered by divers, and are believed to have once contained mummified animals put there to appease the gods. Dr. Damien Robinson, director of the Oxford Center for Maritime Archaeology at the University of Oxford, who is part of the team working on the site, said, quote, It is a major city we are excavating. The site has amazing preservation. We are now starting to look at some of the more interesting areas within it to try to understand life there. We are getting a rich picture of things like the trade that was going on there and the nature of the maritime economy in the Egyptian late period. There were things coming in from Greece and the Phoenicians, end quote. Another string to a once amazing civilization's bow. We will keep you posted regarding any perplexing finds. Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, take care. There are many unexplained ruins which can be found within Egypt. Who built the Great Pyramids? What was the true identity and purpose for the Great Sphinx? Countless mysteries still swirl around these enormous structures. And no matter how much academic study is pursued within this mystical place, an answer for how, and indeed why these monstrous feats were undertaken, remains unanswered. The reason for this gap in our understanding, we have come to hypothesize, is due to a paradigm of understanding, the result of which being that we as a species can only recollect a fraction of our history. A case of global amnesia has beset our kind, and unless those with the ability to see through the fog of established and as such heavily researched areas of our history, we may never solve the most important question of all. Where do we come from? The reason for our growing, staunch belief in a lost history is only further compounded by the subjects we research, and indeed the seemingly impossible and as yet unanswered methods that an ancient, clearly once highly capable civilization utilized to achieve such remarkable feats of ancient engineering, and our next item of choice is of no exception. As mentioned, there exists a heavily researched and indeed unraveled history, which can be archaeologically found amongst these truly impressive ruins. However, Although we are led to believe that academia has a handle on the ancient lives of those who dwelled within these structures, there are many areas which tell a different story, and one must question why. Why is there such gaps of explanation? When we are told that much of what these groups undertook has been researched and understood since the time of Edward Carter. Why was the Valley of the Kings lost? Who, and indeed how, were the ancient pyramids constructed? Many of the things we are now under the presumption have been fully explored are merely rediscoveries, completely absent from the ream of writing and hieroglyphics later deciphered and read. 
the submerged city of Heraculon, for example, an entire ancient city which not only clearly dates from the time of the pyramids, but was also submerged in an event we are yet to be informed of. The rediscovery of this site in recent times is yet another example that the attitudes of those who are granted access to such sites is misplaced, and what we thought we knew about the true creators of said sites is a red herring, a smokescreen, placed down by later, surviving, and due to these unknown events, proven by heavy research, far less capable, far more primitive a civilization, who merely re-inhabited such sites, allowing them to develop to a point where they were not only able to leave their own archaeological legacy amongst these ruins, but also to claim such intimidating works as their own. Such a reality, such a claimed illusion, would also have made them a perceived force to be reckoned with, an opportunistic strategy that any critical thinking leader would have leapt at to not only preserve one's power, but to ensure the ongoing existence of their own kind. This posited scenario would also explain why the ancient city of Heraculon, and indeed the Sphinx, the Great Pyramids, the Colossus of Memnon, the unfinished obelisk, and so forth, remained undescribed within what is claimed as the Builder's writings, and why such incredible feats were seemingly silently undertaken. Any explanation as to how these sites were built, such as that of Baalbek over a thousand miles away, possessed Aswan granite columns many tons in weight, remains a mystery. For one can claim such works as their own, but an explanation as to how they achieved them would not be something they could provide. Who built the ancient city of Heraculon, indeed the entire plateau of Giza? Why is the city submerged underwater, and what happened to those who constructed such sites? It is a pursuit for answers which we find highly compelling. Over a hundred years ago, a curious discovery was made in a town now named after this Upart, Rockwell within Texas. An ancient wall was unearthed, and although it was clearly of an artificial nature, its possible age predictably made a number of people in the academic world deny its artificial origins in favor of a far less likely scenario involving natural formation. Although magnetic exploration suggested that the rock wall had been where it lay for over 100,000 years, its origins have been heavily debated ever since its initial discovery. In 1852, farmers in Texas were digging a well when they discovered the wall. Conservative estimates have placed its creation some 100,000 years ago. Yet now, many believe it to actually be an antediluvian relic left by a now lost civilization some 200 to 400,000 years ago. Dr. John Geisman of the University of Texas, Dallas, tested the rocks as part of a History Channel documentary, giving credence to the denial of its artificial origins, suggesting they formed where they were, claiming that they were all magnetized in the same way. This tremendous age has led many to believe in modern paradigm, to deny a man-made origin, as this does to corroborate with the Bering Strait theory and currently upheld timelines in regards to evolution. However, there are others in similar fields who have found curious characteristics of the wall which do indeed suggest artificial origins. Geologist James Shelton, for example, and Harvard's architect John Lindsay have focused on its unique design features, including architectural elements, archways, lintel portals, and square doorway and window openings, which all suggest not only artificial creation, but functionality for humans, which nature would simply not create. The depth or past height of the wall is also an impressive legacy. The family of T.U. Wade, who moved to the area and initially made the discovery, dug to a depth of 40 feet to try and find the bottom of the wall. This excavation, however, was abandoned without finding the bottom. Years later, in 1949, Mr. Sanders of Fort Worth took up the baton and continued excavational exploration of the wall, 
finding a number of megalithic stones at considerable depth and weighing several tons. After bringing them to the surface, mysterious pictographs were found upon them, further supporting the thesis of artificial origin. In addition, curious metal rings of modern composition were found embedded in rocks, suggesting the presence of lost technology. It would appear that the wall is indeed an antediluvian relic, one possibly submerged and subsequently buried in ancient sediment during the Great Flood. Modern studies have found that the wall is in fact six stories tall and 20 miles in length, with a number of individuals now attributing the wall to a lost civilization of giants due to its inexplicable nature. Quote, it is good when examples like rock wall appear that test our abilities and cause us to question basic Newtonian mechanistic assumptions that have not been modified for over 150 years. Physics had to abandon this approach at the turn of the century, opting instead for relativity and quantum mechanics in order to further their understanding of matter and the universe," said James Shelton, geologist from New Orleans. It is a relic which we find highly compelling.